promise me this? How come it's not happening? Lord, I thought you promised I will have this. How come it's not happening? So, now you're not alone. I think most of us experience that too, right? Yeah. And, and this is the thing now. The difficulty tonight is, uh, how can you focus listening to me with these two babies running around? So, so that, is the, that gives you a challenge too, right? Yeah. But God is looking at you whether, will you still be concentrated? Uh, in this message. So, is it this true? Yes. Amen, Bata. This, this one is right. Yeah. That life has lots of mysteries. Amen. Why? Like, we don't know. But what I know is that God, and we can use those unknown times, so we can be closer to God. And one thing I know too, because if we understand everything happening in our lives, we don't need God anymore. Mama. That's why there are things in our lives we do not understand, so we can come to God. Mama. So God can explain to us. God can give us the answer. Next slide. Now there are famous, I told you we're not alone. There are people in the Bible who experience the same too. So tonight let me give you 10 people. But because we are short of time, I cut it to three. <laughs> so you'll be happier and I'll be invited again. Okay? So let me give you three famous people in the Bible that where they experience many, many moments where life doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. And next slide, let's talk about Abraham. You all know Abraham, right? Abraham was a person promised by God uh, that he will be the father of many nations, that his sons and daughters will be like the stars in the sky and the sands in the seashore, right? When God promised that to Abraham, how old was he? He was not 21 years old. He was not 25. He was 75 years old, okay? When God promised to him that he will be the father of many nations, he was 75. And he was married to a lady named? Sarah. Sarah. You know your Bible, huh? <laughs> so named Sarah. And the Bible said that Sarah's womb is already dead. She cannot conceive anymore. Okay? That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah? It really doesn't make sense. But Abraham believed. He believed, right? Now, so soon after, a son was born, right? And his name was? Isaac. Okay? You know, when uh, uh, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, 25 years after the promise was said. 25 years. So Abraham and Sarah may have been wondering, when, is the, when, when will the promise be fulfilled? But God is faithful. Amen. That's a good time to say amen. 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 God is faithful. Amen. What he promised, he is able to perform. Amen. Not in your time though, in God's time. Amen. Because God's time is always perfect. So God gave him, gave them a son named Isaac. So he's excited now. Now this makes sense. Abraham was saying, I will be the father of many nations. God gave me one son, right? You know, I'll have many sons, many daughters. But what happened afterwards? God told Abraham to offer Isaac and go top of the Mount Moriah to offer him as a sacrifice. Does it make sense? No. Totally. Does it make sense? Because in mathematics, one minus one, zero. you have your calculator with you? <laughs> one minus one is zero. God promised me I'll have many sons and daughters. He did not give me twins. He didn't give me triplets. He only gave me one. Now God is asking for that one son to be sacrificed. Does it make sense? But God, trust, uh, Abraham trusted God more than his situation. Oh, you didn't get another perfect time to say amen. God, oh, Abraham trusted God more than his situation. Amen. Many times, we equate who God is with our situation. Balik na? It's the other way around. Sometimes, we equate God with our situation. When we are encountering uh, 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 difficulties, oh, God is nowhere to be found. When we are uh, experiencing financial hardship, oh, God is mad at me. So we equate the situation with God. When it should be different, it should be our faith in God that we should believe more than our situation. Amen. Another perfect time to say Amen. Amen. Yeah. So that is how Abraham survived when life doesn't make sense. Okay? He knew God. He knew his God is. He knew that his God is faithful. Faithful to the end. That although many things in his life doesn't make sense, he still believed that God is faithful. Amen. Actually, what is the next slide? In Genesis 22, sometime later, God, what is the word? Test. Yeah. It's all about test. Life, you see, the challenge that you are experiencing now, the difficulty, how many of us have problems? Yeah. We're all alive. Yes. Yeah. The problem that you have is not meant to punish you. It's not meant to condemn you. It is meant to test you. Hello? Yeah. Right? It's not meant to punish, not meant to condemn, yeah. not because God is angry with you, but God wants to test you. Amen. Yeah. We are all students like last time. We don't like tests, right? Yeah. You know who are the students who doesn't like the test? Those who did not study. <laughs> but if you studied, 
Come on, bring it on, right? Huh? Yeah. Right? Yeah. In life, God allows the test because test comes before promotion. Amen. Amen. Who who wants promotions? Now promotion comes after the test. There can never be test. There can never be promotion without the test. Okay, here, here, focus here. Right? So here, sometime later, God tested, test, not punished, not condemned. So in your life, the first lesson that we can learn today is that God is testing you. Why? Why is He testing you? So you can be prepared for a promotion. Mm -hmm. You know. So God tested Abraham. Tested, tested, tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. Immediately here I am. Yeah? He replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love. You know. So God told Abraham, Abraham, take your, take your son. And he even said, Your only son, <laughs> whom you love. Huh? And go to the region of Moriah. Next slide, brother. And sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense, right? But look at what Abraham did the following day, early in the morning. Huh? You're not even sure what you're doing? You do it early in the morning? You see, he's not sure, but he knows the one who said it. He knows God. Okay? Early in the morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. Next slide. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the, for the place God had told him about. Next slide. Next one. Hey, uh, go back. So here we see that Abraham is in the middle of something that doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. God promised he would have many sons. God gave him one son. Now God is saying to sacrifice. One minus one, zero. How can that be, right? You know, sometimes in our lives too, when we receive our check, right? Or our salary, minus this, minus this, minus this, minus this. Zero. <laughs> right? You know? Doesn't make sense sometimes. Huh? Sometimes negative. Sometimes negative, you know? We don't understand. There's a lot of things we don't understand. But you see, God is preparing us. God is testing us. Mm. Whether are we trusting the resource or the source? Mm. You know, here, what God is testing Abraham is that: Do you really put your faith on the son that I gave you, or yeah. from me that promised you? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's different. So maybe Abraham saying, "Oh, now I have a son. I don't need God, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Oh, now I have a job. I don't need to go to church. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I have money. I don't need God. Oh, now I am strong. I don't need God." See, here, God is teaching Abraham that his faith should not be with the one given to him, but his faith should always be on God. Amen. That even though this son will be given, his faith should still stand. Amen. So here we see that Abraham did it. He obeyed. You know? And soon enough, when he was about to sacrifice, Isaac said, oh, oops. God answered 11.59 hour. <laughs> God, 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 is, God is never late. Amen. Just imagine the scenario, okay? You gather the wood, you tie up your own son. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you're about, when you're about to, to kill your son, God says, oh, 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 oops. Yeah. God answered in the perfect time. Mm. Tell, your, tell your neighbor God will answer you in the perfect time. Mm. 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 Thank you. Same to you. Man. Now his perfect time, not your perfect time. Yeah. 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 Because sometimes our time is not God's time. Yeah. 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 Hello? Yeah. And sometimes we put God our own timing. God, this is my time, okay? Answer this according to my time. No, <laughs> it should be always God's time because God's time is always perfect. Yeah. Don't put God in a timeline. Because God is not under any time, you know? And, and why God wants us to wait? God wants us to be patient. Patient, right? Patient is something that is not very popular nowadays because everything is instant, you know? But patient, patience is a very good Christian character. And patience is being developed. How, how can you have patience? Any suggestion how you can have patience? Through the situations? Through what is happening in your life? And it is not something that will be given to you instantly. Mm -hmm. It is through time. We cannot say, Lord, give me patience and give me right now. <laughs> Hurry up. No, that doesn't make sense. We have to wait. So here we can see the first person. Doesn't make sense. Same with you and me. Sometimes in our lives, doesn't make sense. What is happening in my life? Why am I here? What is the purpose? What is the plan? Mm. What is the reason? Mm. Why did God allow this to happen in my life? Amen. So even this pandemic. God, did, God was not surprised that this pandemic came. We were surprised. God's not, God, God was not surprised. God must have a plan. Amen. So the second person, second, uh, I, I promised you three, right? Let's go to Noah. Again, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and you know the story of Noah, right? Huh? He divided the Red Sea. No. no. Oh, you're still alive, huh? <laughs> I just want to test if you're still sleeping and you're away. Who's Noah again? Uh, he was the one who built the ark. Yeah. You can read it in Genesis chapter 5. God wants to save the whole world and restore humanity to what it should be. God told Noah, build up an ark. Now, if you're Noah, would you believe it? 
built an ark on top of the mountain. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know? And you know how long it took Noah to build the ark? Many, many years. <laughs> and I bet you there are days where Noah will wake up, ah, <laughs> shall I go and build the ark? It took him many, many years to build an ark, mm. live many, many years to a situation that doesn't make total sense. Mm. But he believed God. Amen. He knows God is faithful. Amen. He knows God is true. Yeah. He wakes up every day, cut the wood, put, built the ark for many years. But it was fulfilled. Mm. What God promised came true. Did God promise you something and you're waiting for it? That's cool. Wait for it. Continue to wait. Has God promised you someone? Wait. Just pray. When it doesn't make sense, God makes sense. Amen. Right? Amen. Next one, brother. Again, the third person. Job. The Bible describes Job as almost perfect in the way that he's very godly. He feared God. Nothing was wrong with him. But then the Bible said he experienced the destruction of everything that he has, the death of all his children, and then he had this boil. Sa Tagalog, pigsa. Sino na nagka-pigsa? Masakit ang pigsa. At minsan tumutubo ang pigsa sa parte ng katawan. Hindi pa kaaya-aya. Diba? Right? Really much. It doesn't make sense. Diba? Minsan sa pili-pili. Kung saan-saan pa. Job experienced all his sufferings for no reason at all. Right? Sometimes we wonder, why is God allowing these things to happen in me where I did not do anything? Right? So you're not alone if you're, if you're having that kind of a feeling, if you're having that kind of an experience where you know you are a good Christian, you've been coming to church. How come that irregular member doesn't have any brother? I come to church every day. Same with, same with Job. It doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. You know? But God deals with us personally anyway. Huh? What is God dealing with us may be different with what he's dealing with other people. Yes. And we cannot judge too because we don't even know what they're going through. Amen. Maybe what they're going through is even worse than what you're going through. Yeah. That's right. Because we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We can't judge, mm. right? But here's Job. Again, totally. Doesn't make sense. Mm. Everything was taken. But then he remained faithful. He remained faithful. Next one, brother. Now, let me give you uh, 10 <coughs> to-do things, which I, again, uh, I think, I, how many do I have there, brother? I think I have five. Okay. So, so I can be invited again, so from 10, I make it to my <laughs> What to do when life doesn't make sense? Ready? Yes. Okay, go on, next one. Know that if God allows it, he has a purpose for it, and he will see you through it. Amen. Amen. If God allowed it, it means he had a purpose for it. The purpose is not to condemn, to punish, to judge you. No. To test, to try, to prepare you. That is, because God is a God of purpose. God is a God of plan. Amen. God is a God of objectivity. Amen. And He is a good God. Amen. His plan is always good. Amen. Okay? So, He allowed it, it means He has a plan. God, I tell your neighbor, God has a plan. God has a plan. So, if God allows it, He has a purpose for it, and He will see you through it. God is a good starter, He's a good finisher. Amen. We discussed that the other day. Oh. 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 Oh.